screen is actually powered through the Pi and so you have to plug the power into the Pi's USB or the Pi power port. So now that we have our screen assembled we need to go ahead and power up our Pi and log into it. I like to use a program called Putty to do this and you just go ahead and put your IP address in there and the port that you use to SSH into it. The first thing that we need to do when we get logged into a Raspberry Pi is update all the packages and we do this with this command right here it's sudo apt get update and and sudo apt get upgrade yes now we're gonna go ahead and let this install this is gonna take quite a while and when it's done we're going to install an app called light DM which is a desktop manager and this will help us out a little bit when we go to install some other desktop utilities and then all we need to do is just reboot the server again. After we get logged into the system, we can go ahead and download the driver from GitHub. And the way we do that is with this command here is git clone and then the HTTPS address for that driver. That'll dr download that to our Raspberry Pi. Next we need to change access permissions for the directory that we just downloaded and everything in it. And we do that with chmod minus capital R. And the capital R means that it's recursive. 755 means that we have read and execute access for everyone and also write access for the owner of the file. Next we're gonna change directory into the LCD show so that we use CD for that. And now we can show a list of everything in that directory by using ls. Next we're going to install the driver and we have to use sudo for that so we use sudo dot forward slash and then lcd 5 dash show and then that will run that script. And then when the script finishes it will reboot. Now as you can see here, the screen works just fine, but we're still in a text interface. We need a graphical interface too. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna delete that directory that we downloaded, 
we don't need it anymore and uh, just kind of clean it up a little bit. We do do this by using the rm command and then that'll remove the files. Next we're going to go ahead and enable GL support and we're also going to enable auto login. First thing we need to do is get into raspy config and then we'll go down to advanced options. Now go to GL driver This will install the packages. Okay, so now after the packages are installed, we're gonna go with the full KMS. So it'd be G3 there, and hit OK. And the full KMS GL driver is enabled. Now we're gonna go back to system options, and then we're gonna go down to boot auto login. And we're gonna go down to B4. Now this won't let us log in automatically at first. We need to install some other software and then it'll allow us to log in automatically. So we go ahead and finish and now we reboot. And then here you can go ahead and see that we are able to get our desktop up and it has a login, but it will not let you log in quite yet. We need some other things that we need to do. So here we are in our web interface for our Octoprint and the first thing that we need to do is go up to settings and then go down here to plugin manager. And then we do a search for touch UI because that's going to be the touch interface that we install but I just did a search for UI right here it is and we'll put the full touch UI in there. Now we want to install this plugin and this might take a little bit okay now we need to go ahead and restart and we'll come back to our command prompt after we restart and install touch UI helper menus so that way we can get this thing configured so here we are at our prompt and we're going to get this touch UI script from github again and you see there there's a long address and now we're going to go ahead and run the script now what the script is going to do is help us set up our touch UI interface or our auto start so here we need the username that we use to log into octoprint not our pi our octoprint so now they're asking if they can restart octoprint and yep everything looks good there and now we're gonna do a reboot because we got to do a manual reboot and that essentially is the last step of installing this touch user in interface um, we're gonna go ahead and hook this up to our 3d printer and try to navigate to a file and then we're gonna start printing so if you like what you've seen today, please like and subscribe. It helps the channel out quite a bit, and I hope this was helpful, and we'll see you in a few weeks.